first recipe is our scrambled egg cups. Now for this recipe you need one cup of cheese, 12 eggs or a dozen eggs, and one cup of ham. Now I didn't have ham so I had to use sausage which works out just fine. It's all pre-cooked ready to go. And then a little bit of salt and pepper to taste. Now you're going to crack all 12 eggs into the bowl, whisk them all together. Then you're gonna add a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper on top, and then go ahead and add your ham or your sausage, mix it up a little bit, and you're ready to go. Now I'm using a 1 4th measuring cup to just dump it right into a mini muffin pan. Next, go ahead and just sprinkle your favorite cheese on top. Preheat your oven to 350 degrees. Put the muffin tin right into it. You're gonna cook this for about 20 minutes. When it's all done, they'll be a little bit poofy, which I like that word, poofy. <laughs> then you can just pull them out and cut them up and they are ready to go for breakfast. So here's what you need. You need two tablespoons of normal yogurt. Then I like to add sweetened condensed milk, so I'm adding 14 ounces of sweetened condensed milk. You don't have to add this. You can just do yogurt and milk if you want, but it gives it a little more flavor. Then we're using Fair Life Whole Extra Filtered Milk. The extra filtered is very important, and this is a half gallon. Then you need an Instant Pot that has a yogurt function. And that's it. That's all you need for this recipe. So first I'm gonna pour a little bit of milk in, maybe about a half a cup of milk, and then I'm gonna put my sweetened condensed milk right on top of it. Now you wanna get a whisk and you wanna mix this in really well. It's, it's really thick, so the better you whisk, the better it will be. So once it's all mixed in, it's time to add the rest of your milk. So go ahead and just pour it all in. Next you're gonna add two tablespoons of just normal yogurt. It's the plain kind, it's not vanilla, it's no flavors, just the plain yogurt and two tablespoons. All right, those are all your ingredients. Now it's just time to whisk it all together. Now you wanna make sure you get the yogurt chunks because you don't want big chunks in your yogurt while it cooks, you want it completely smooth. Now you can put your Instant Pot lid on it, take the sealing lid off, or I just put a plate on top of my Instant Pot. So now you're gonna push the yogurt button. You wanna make sure that when you push the yogurt button, you want normal. You don't want less, you don't want more, you just want normal pressure. You want this to cook for the eight hours. So if the eight hours shows up on your Instant Pot, you are correct. Then it will actually start counting up instead of counting down when using the yogurt function. Now when it's all done, it will say yogurt. That means it's time to take your plate or lid off and see how it is. Now this is still really hot, but I just wanna show you the texture of this. This is thick and creamy and perfect. So I'm gonna put a paper towel on top and then just any type of lid or saran wrap or anything like that so it can store in your fridge. Now I stored mine overnight and in the morning I woke up, I actually had to flip my lid so it would fit in the fridge, but took off my paper towel so it can get all of the, the moisture and it is perfectly cold, delicious yogurt. Now right now this yogurt is really, really thick, but the more that you play with it and stir it around, it will break up the proteins and it will be able to be a lot more smooth. Today I'm just serving mine with a little bit of granola and a few blueberries on top. I like to use the fresh blueberries, but if I run out, then I like to use frozen. Three ingredient avocado salad. I love this because you just need two avocados, a little bit of little tomatoes and then a jar of artichokes. Go ahead and chop up your tomatoes. I like to make them into small bite-sized pieces. Then go ahead and dump those into your serving bowl. Next, we're gonna cut up the avocados. I also like to put these, cut these into small bite-sized pieces because you don't want a huge bite of avocado and nothing else. Next, we're gonna chop up some artichokes, depending on how many you like. This is a large jar of artichokes. I'm cutting up about half of them. Now for a little bit more flavor, I like to add a little bit of the liquid that artichokes were sitting in and then just mix it up. This recipe is my go-to side dish. The next recipe I'm making is Instant Pot Ribs. Now don't be intimidated by these, they really are so easy. So first I'm gonna add a lot of salt on top of my ribs and then a little bit of pepper. Next you're gonna grab some apple juice and pour about a cup to a cup and a half into your pot. 
Now this is your liquid so you'll be able to get the pressure. Now my Instant Pot is a 6 quart and the ribs I'm using are beef ribs so they're actually a lot bigger. But if you're using pork ribs, you can put them in your Instant Pot just like this in any size of Instant Pot. But because my ribs are so big they don't fit that way so I'm going to show you how I put them in. So first you're just going to cut them right down the middle. Try not to cut the bone and try and make the meat as even on both sides if you can. As soon as you're done cutting them, you're going to put them inside the Instant Pot, one on top of the other. Then put on your lid, make sure you seal it tight, and always, always make sure it's on sealing so it will work. Then you're going to press your meat stew button and go all the way down to 25. Now I let this recipe do a slow release, meaning I let it release on its own. So now I'm just going to check, yep, there's no pressure, so I'm going to open it up. And the smell of these things are amazing. So I'm going to take some tongs, pull them out, and put them on a lined cookie sheet. I lined it with foil, so my cleanup is going to be a breeze. Before your Instant Pot is done cooking, go ahead and preheat your oven to broil. So it'll be about 550 degrees or broil. Now before we broil these, we're going to spread some barbecue sauce on them so they'll be caramelized, I guess, in barbecue sauce. <laughs> so I just did a few squirts of barbecue sauce. You can use any kind of barbecue sauce you like, and then I just spread it around so it will be pretty even on each rib. Then when you're done, stick them in the broiler for about ooh, two to four minutes. You need to watch it so it doesn't burn your ribs. Now instead of just dumping this applesauce, I'm going to put some potatoes in it because I'm going to have mashed potatoes with my ribs. This is totally optional, but I'm all about easy side dishes. When you have your potatoes in, you're just going to turn it, make sure it's sealed, then you'll push manual. You're going to go up to 15 minutes. While those are cooking, my ribs are done and they look amazing. And the side dish for this recipe is my Instant Pot corn. Next we're going to jump right into the corn. Now I have a slow cooker recipe for this, but today I'm making it right into the Instant Pot. Now if you've never made corn in the Instant Pot, now's the time to do it. You don't have to watch it, you don't have to wait for it. So I took one cup of water and I threw four ears of corn on. You could add probably one more in a six quart Instant Pot. Now if you're using a three quart one, go ahead and split the corn in half. If you're using an eight quart, you can add more corn if you want. All right, we're gonna close the lid and put it on sealing. And now for my favorite part, because it really doesn't take a lot of time, I'm gonna push manual and go all the way down to five minutes. Now, once it's done, I do a quick release so I can eat my corn faster. But if you do need to wait a little bit, it is fine just to sit in the Instant Pot until dinner is ready. So I take my lid off and my corn is perfectly done. The next main dish is barbecue salmon. You're first gonna start by lining a pan or cookie sheet with foil. It makes it a whole lot easier to clean up. Then you're gonna add your salmon onto the foil, skin side down. Add a little bit of salt and pepper onto your salmon and let it sit there for about 10 minutes or so. Next, you're gonna pour on your favorite barbecue sauce. Then make sure you spread it around so it's covering the salmon pretty evenly. Now you're gonna take your salmon, make sure your oven is preheated to 400 degrees and you're gonna cook it for about 20 to 30 minutes depending on how thick your salmon is. When it's done, it will smell amazing and the barbecue sauce will be like a delicious glaze on top. Now just a quick note, I would suggest getting fresh salmon from the deli, not frozen. Frozen just does not taste very good. I'll just be honest with you. Now the side dish to go along with the salmon is our honey roasted carrots. You're gonna need some olive oil, carrots obviously, a little bit of salt and pepper, and some honey. Now I love to use these bagged carrots because I usually mix everything in this bag, but my three-year-old got to it first and got a little whole, so now I'm gonna mix it all together in a Ziploc bag for you. Next you're gonna pour about three tablespoons of olive oil onto your carrots. Go ahead and zip up the bag with a little bit of air, but not a ton of air, and you're going to mix that olive oil around so it will cover every single carrot. Then go ahead and dump your carrots onto a cookie sheet. Now I usually like to take that same bag and kind of just spread them around. You don't want carrots on top of each other when they cook. 
Next, you're gonna add about a teaspoon or so of salt, just spreading it all along the carrots evenly. And you're gonna do the same with pepper. If you don't love pepper, you don't have to add it, but I love pepper with these carrots. Next, you're gonna drizzle about three tablespoons or so of honey right on to your carrots. You just wanna make sure every carrot gets a little bit of honey. When you're done, you're gonna go ahead and bake those at 400 degrees for about 20 to 25 minutes or until your carrots are the texture that you like them. I like them very cooked, so I go about 30 minutes every time. Now I like to add just a little bit more honey on top right before I serve them just to get that little added sweetness. It's my favorite. Now make sure you serve these nice and hot because they are so good that way. Now the next main dish is our easy club chicken. So you're gonna need a box of club crackers, about a half a cup of butter, a little package of zesty Italian seasoning, and then of course, chicken. <laughs> You're first gonna take your butter and microwave it in a microwave safe dish until it's completely melted. While that's melting, go ahead and crush up your crackers into little tiny crumbs. You will want about a cup and a half of those. Next, we're going to add our Italian seasoning dressing packet right on top of the crumbs. And just mix those all together until it's well combined. So now that the butter is melted, you're gonna put your chicken into the butter, kind of, you know, make sure the butter is all around the chicken, and then put the chicken into, of course, the seasoning, the crumbs and the Italian seasoning. Make sure it's all covered, ready to go, and then you can place that right onto the cookie sheet. Then you're just gonna continue those steps until all of the chicken is gone and you've used all the breadcrumbs and the butter. If you need a little bit more butter, go ahead and melt some more. All right, now it's time to cook. You're gonna preheat your oven to 375 degrees. We're gonna cook it for about 45 minutes to an hour, depending on how thick your chicken breasts are. Now halfway through, you can flip those over. It's totally up to you. And there you have it, easy club chicken. Now to go with this recipe is our three ingredient Parmesan rolls. For this recipe, you need 12 frozen dinner rolls, a half a cup of butter, I like salted butter, and then one cup of Parmesan cheese. Now I microwaved my butter in a microwave safe bowl and we're going to dip the frozen roll, it's totally frozen, into the butter. Mix it around a little bit, then you're gonna go straight into the Parmesan. Mix it, if you need to press Parmesan onto it, you can. Then you're going to put it into a nine by 13 pan that has been sprayed with nonstick cooking spray. Now you're just going to continue this step until all 12 rolls are onto your pan. Now these rolls need to rise, so we're going to cover them with saran wrap and put them in a warm place. I like to put them kind of in the sun or just a spot where it's gonna be warm so they will rise a little faster. Now once they are doubled in size, go ahead and put them in the oven. You're gonna cook them at 350 degrees for about 15 minutes or until they are golden brown on top. I like to serve this with just a little bit of butter and it's the perfect side dish. Now the next main dish is our three ingredient chicken tacos. So you just need a taco seasoning packet, a frozen package of chicken, and then also your favorite salsa. I'm gonna cook it in my Instant Pot today, so we're going to put the chicken into the bottom of the Instant Pot. Now these are tenderloin, so they're a little bit smaller. You can use chicken breasts if you want to. I'm putting about ooh, six or seven in there because we have to feed a family of six. Now on top of the chicken, you're gonna add your taco seasoning packet. Just dump it right on top and then you're gonna pour on your salsa. I'm using the whole jar of salsa just because I like it that way. Now because it is the Instant Pot, I'm gonna add a little bit, about a fourth a cup of water, so it will pressurize. Next, go ahead and put your lid on the Instant Pot. Make sure that little knob is turned to sealing, not venting. Then go ahead and push the manual or pressure cook button, depending on what you have. And because they're pretty small, I'm just gonna cook this for 20 minutes with my frozen chicken. Now when it's all done cooking, I turned my little knob to venting and let out all the pressure so the lid will come off nice and easy. Now I pulled out my chicken just to shred it up just a little bit easier. You can leave it in the Instant Pot and shred it from there, but yeah, whatever works for you. Then all you do is put it on some tortillas or salad, add your favorite toppings. I'm gonna add just a little bit of cheese on top. Then I'm just gonna roll it up and serve it nice and hot. The side dish to go with this recipe is our cauliflower Spanish rice. So all you need is a jar of your favorite salsa, some ground chicken or turkey, depending on what you like, 
and then also some riced cauliflower. I like to get the frozen kind. Now you're gonna start by putting your turkey or chicken into a skillet and you're going to cook it up. Now if you've never heard me talk about the chop stir, this is one of my most favorite kitchen items. I'll put a link in the description for you. It is amazing. Now once your meat has started to brown just a little bit, you can go ahead and add your cauliflower rice onto it. It's still frozen. I am just cooking it just from frozen, just like this. Then mix it around until your meat is all the way cooked and your cauliflower rice is nice and soft. Once everything is cooked, it's now time to add the salsa. So I'm adding one jar, about 16 ounces, of just your favorite salsa. Then just mix that in until everything is nice and well combined. And that is all there is to it. One of my most simplest recipes, but also one of my favorites. The next recipe is sweet and tangy meatballs. You can make this in your Instant Pot or slow cooker. We're gonna do the Instant Pot today. So you're gonna take a package of frozen meatballs and pour it into the bottom of your Instant Pot. Next, you're gonna add a can of chili sauce and about a half a jar of your favorite grape jelly. That's all there is to this. Now I am gonna pour a little bit of water in my chili sauce and get the sides just to give it a little more liquid and to get the sides of the chili sauce. Go ahead and put your lid on, make sure the little knob is turned to sealing. Then you're gonna push the pressure cook button and meatballs only cook for seven minutes. Once it beats, you can just walk away. Now once it's done, you can turn the knob or press the knob to venting so you can release your lid safely once all the pressure is out. Now my husband loves to eat these over rice, but my kids love to eat them just with a toothpick. Now the side dish to this recipe is Parmesan corn. For this recipe, you need a package of ranch dressing, a half a cup of Parmesan, shredded Parmesan, two tablespoons of butter, and then three cups of either frozen corn or fresh corn. Now to make my life a little easier, I am using frozen corn today, so I'm just gonna add three cups into a microwave safe bowl. Now my packaging said to add a little bit of water and microwave it for about five minutes until the corn is cooked through. So do what the package tells you to do. Next, you're gonna add your two tablespoons of butter. Now, if you have a little bit of water left over, go ahead and dump that out before you mix in your butter. Now, once your butter is melted, we're gonna let it sit for a few minutes just to cool down. Then we're gonna add one tablespoon of your ranch dressing and then add the Parmesan. Now, if it's really, really hot, your Parmesan's gonna stick together, so that's why it's important to let your corn cool just a little bit before you start mixing in all the rest of the ingredients. I'm telling you, once you have this corn, you won't go back to just plain corn ever again. Now our next main dish is our avocado chicken salad. Now I use some bakery rolls, a little bit of salt and pepper, avocados, and then a rotisserie chicken. First, you're going to slice your avocados into cubes or small pieces just to make it easier to blend it up. So small pieces is a must when you're making this. Then you're gonna add a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper. You can kind of taste test, see how you like it. You can always add more later if you need more. Next, I'm just gonna smash all the avocados up with a fork. You can use a blender if you want, but I feel like I waste some on the side, so I am using a fork today. Next, you're gonna take your rotisserie chicken, whether you cut it or tear it up, it doesn't matter. You just want bite-sized pieces and you're putting them into the bowl. Once you have about a cup to a cup and a half of chicken, go ahead and mix your chicken and avocados together. Now the thing that makes this recipe even more amazing is serving it on delicious bakery buns. This is one of my most favorite go-to recipes when I have not a lot of food in the kitchen. This is what we make. Now the side dish to this recipe is baked zucchini fries. So for this recipe you need some small crumbled Parmesan cheese, two eggs, three zucchinis, and then some Italian panko breadcrumbs. Now you want to cut up your zucchini so they're about the size of normal fries. Now if you have foil, you want to line a cookie sheet with foil. It will make your cleanup so much better. So now I need two containers for my mixture. So I'm using cake pans. We're gonna put two eggs in one, mix it up really good. And in the other pan, we're gonna add about a half a cup of the panko crumbs and then about a fourth a cup of the Parmesan. Then just mix that up until it's well combined. Now it's time to put it all together. So I have my zucchini all cut up, ready to go. So you're gonna take a few pieces, I did a few pieces at one time, 
and just kind of mix them around in the egg mixture. Then you're just gonna put it right over into the crumbs, the pinko crumbs, bread crumbs, yeah, that's what it's called. The pinko and parmesan, and then just put it right onto your cookie sheet. Then just do the same thing with all of the zucchini. And when you are all done, it is time to bake. So we are going to preheat the oven to 425 degrees. We are going to cook these for about 10 to 12 minutes until they are nice and baked. After the 10 to 12 minutes, go ahead and open it up. You're going to flip over the fries as carefully as possible, not to burn yourself, please. And then you're going to close the oven and we're gonna cook them for about another 10 to 12 minutes. Then when they are all the way done, just pull them out. They should be nice and browned and they're kind of crispy, just like fries. Your kids won't even know that these are zucchini. The next recipe is our man catching chicken, which is so funny, but you're gonna need some chicken. You're gonna need three fourths cup of maple syrup, a half cup of Dijon mustard, and about a tablespoon of red wine vinegar. Now you're gonna make the sauce first, so you want about half a cup of Dijon mustard. I highly suggest Dijon and not just plain yellow mustard. It just gives it a better taste. The next ingredient is maple syrup. So you're gonna use three fourths cup of maple syrup and just put it right on top of your mustard. Then you just need about one tablespoon of your red wine vinegar. Whisk that all together until it's well combined and then we are ready to put it on the chicken. I took a nine by 13 pan and just lined up my chicken. Then I just poured on my delicious mixture. Go ahead and preheat your oven to 425 degrees. Now because my chicken is thick, I'm gonna cook about 15 minutes, then flip it over and cook another 15 minutes. If you have thick chicken, I would cook it for 20 minutes and then flip it for another 20 minutes. Now once your chicken is all the way done, go ahead and pull it out. Now after I plate the chicken, I also like to pour a little bit of the sauce on top. Now the perfect side dish for this recipe is Instant Pot green beans. All right, next recipe, we're going to make some beans. So I have two tablespoons of butter, one cup of water, one pound of green beans, and then on top of the green beans, I'm gonna add just a little bit, like a teaspoon of garlic. And go ahead and put your lid on, make sure it's all the way tight. You're gonna turn it again to sealing so it will pressurize. And you're gonna go all the way down to five minutes. Now I cook mine for five and they're really well done. You can even do two minutes and they'll still be good. Now when it shows the L, that means that the timer is done and you're ready to let the steam out. So that's called a quick release. So I turn the little knob, once all the pressure is out, my lid will come off and my beans are ready to go. So all I have to do is mix them around a little bit. Now one of my favorite things is when the garlic pressurizes, it kind of pressurizes the garlic flavor into all of the beans. It's one of my most favorite things to make. So these beans are done and we are all ready to serve. So I like to serve them in just a serving dish, individual bowls, however you like to do it. Next recipe is our pepperoni pizza rolls. Now all you're gonna need is mozzarella cheese, some pizza crust, and some pizza sauce. I'm gonna start by rolling out my dough and spreading it out a little bit because we need to make rolls here. So we need to spread it out pretty thin so it will cook evenly. Now just to give it a little bit more flavor, I'm adding a little bit of garlic salt and just a little bit of Italian seasoning on top of the pizza crust. Next I'm gonna add about a cup to a cup and a half of mozzarella cheese. Then you wanna make sure that you spread the cheese all around pretty evenly. Okay, now it's time to make our pizza roll, so we have to carefully roll the dough with the cheese inside of it. Now, there are ends here. I'm gonna cut off both ends, but I am still gonna use those because they will work just fine. Okay, next you're gonna cut about one inch pieces or rolls, and then just carefully place them on a cookie sheet. I would also suggest spraying your cookie sheet with cooking spray just so they will come off a little easier. Now, once you're all done making them, go ahead and take the pan. You're gonna cook it in your oven at 425 degrees for about 10 to 12 minutes. Now, when they're all done, they should be nice and golden brown on top. And the best part is just dipping them in your favorite marinara sauce. Now, the perfect side dish for this is our simple green salad. 
So all you need is some chopped romaine salad, a really good poppy seed dressing, I love Panera's, and then just a can of mandarin oranges. Now I like to make this with individual servings, so I add my salad, added some dressing, and then on top you're just gonna add a little bit of mandarin oranges. I love that you can throw it together in literally a matter of minutes. 